Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. This is Jeff Palmer. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, today something that I think is vitally important and not because of aesthetics. It's important for overall health, fitness, and could be even life or death. So let me start with an introduction. Welcome to uh, Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, a plant-based fitness nutrition company. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay, let's start with being overweight. This, this is nothing to be uh, ashamed of. This is something to address, though, if you want to live um, and want to live a healthy life free from disease states. So let's, uh, let's start with how this all began. Um, we have now 10 food companies that control over 90% of all of the food Americans eat. And the vast majority of that food that they produce is processed food. It is food that has had the fiber removed, had the micronutrients removed, have the polyphenols and all the phytonutrients removed. They are tearing apart our food and making it less and less healthy for us. And these are the options that are available, whether it's fast food or in grocery stores, whether it's the cereal aisle or restaurants. The food that is available to us is horrendous. <laughs> and and it's this has resulted in now over 70% of all Americans being overweight or obese. This is epidemic, and this is one of the biggest drains on our economy, uh, both from the healthcare, healthcare system with over $100 billion a year, $150 billion a year, and increased healthcare costs. And that's across the board for everyone, whether you're healthy or not, um, in the cost of insurance, in the cost of Medicare, in the cost of uh, pharmaceutical drugs, in the cost of, of disease care in hospitals and the cost of doctors. These are all getting out of control because what we're eating is out of control. We need to change this. And we need to change by first starting with a healthier diet. But that's not everything. When we have situations that we've created, man-made situations like this situation, where we've created a horrible food supply that is causing obesity and disease states. We need greater action. If it was just a little bit of bad food, well, then a little bit of good diet would, would correct it. Now we're at a place where we need to do more to correct this, or we could end up dying. Remember, obesity increases the risks for cancer, increases the risk for heart disease, for strokes, for diabetes. It's now even called diabesity, which is obesity and diabetes combined, because obesity is almost exclusively causal to diabetes. So when we look at all these disease states, the top killers that are all contributed to that, and look, even even your risk of dying from COVID is greatly increased if you are carrying excess body fat, uh, if you are overweight or obese. So there's, there's no two ways around it. This weight needs to come off and it needs to come off quickly or we run the risk of dying. Well, there was an interesting study that I did just recently talk about uh, on a previous one. If you do uh, check it out, uh, I go into a deeper dive, but I'm just going to bring this up again because it's worth um, reviewing, which is the different effects of lifestyle intervention on high and low risk pre-diabetes results in randomized controlled pre-diabetes lifestyle intervention. It's called the PLIS study, if you want to look it up, P-L-I-S. And it was actually done by the American Diabetic Association. So they had put together a diet for people on diabetes to try to reduce their risk of diabetes. But they found about 60% of the people, even with the diet and light exercise, did not get results that were life-saving, did not normalize their glucose levels and normalize their insulin sensitivity. So they, they decided, okay, 
well, what if we just take one factor, don't change the diet at all. We just double the amount of the exercise that they do. And the results showed, and this is a direct quote, that more exercise, i.e. more intensive lifestyle intervention, which is doubling the amount of exercise they were doing, helps people at high risk improve their blood glucose and all of the cardiometabolic levels and reduce liver fat content to within normal range where conventional lifestyle intervention with just a light exercise and diet was less effective. So this is really clear that even the American Diabetic Association is seeing we need to step up our exercise levels because diet is not sufficient to what we have already created in this monster of uh, epidemic of obesity and diabetes um, in, in humans. All right. So let's get to the study that I want to talk about, because this is a really important one, because a lot of people say, okay, well, I'll start walking or I'll start doing some cardio with that. And that's great. Anything better than nothing is, is great, is awesome. But when we're talking about life or death situation, when we're increasing our risk for cancer, heart attack, stroke, and diabetes, all by carrying extra weight, getting that weight down to a reasonable level, to a healthy level, is important to do as quickly as possible before it causes serious effects. Remember, diabetes is the number one cause of blindness in the United States. Diabetes. Remember what the number one cause of diabetes is? Carrying too much body fat. Number one cause of amputations in the United States. Diabetes. So you see these have grave impacts. Look, my, my neighbor, my next door neighbor had his uh, leg amputated from the knee down because of diabetes, because he refused to change his diet. Now, he lost his left foot because he refused to change his diet. And to me, that's not a good exchange. I'd like to keep walking. I'd like to keep my limbs um, I don't want them amputated. I don't want to go blind because I refuse to change my diet. But exercise can make such a big difference as well. When you combine a healthy plant-based diet with exercise, you can get a lot more accelerated uh, results. This study shows why. I'm going to pull the study up on the screen. And uh, actually, I'll you know, pull up the study in the comments section so you can see it up here up on the screen. So um, this is uh, the study and the study is titled The Effect of Exercise Type During Intentional Weight Loss on Body Composition in Older Adults with Obesity. So this was done in 2017, had 249 uh, participants in it, and it was an 18-month long study. So it was a good size study and good, good amount of time to uh, look at the results. So this is their conclusions that weight loss in the RT or resistance training results in less lean mass, less muscle lost than weight loss diet alone or weight loss diet with aerobic training. Weight loss plus exercise yields greater fat mass loss than diet alone. There it is, pure and simple. You lose more body fat. So let's actually take a look at what that looks like in the graph. So I'm going to pull up the graph from the actual study, and it's pretty, pretty clear. So over on the left-hand side, you see the smallest bar there. That is diet alone. And then the next bar, you see the gray bar in the middle, that is diet with aerobic exercise. But do you see the dark part? That's the loss of lean muscle. Now, if you go to the one to the furthest to the right, you see the greatest amount of fat loss. That's the gray bar there going down further with resistance training, that's weight training. Um, and you also notice the dark gray bar there, half as much muscle loss as those doing aerobics. Now, this is really important. And I want to explain this in depth because it is so important. All right, let's understand when people do cardio exercise, what you are doing is training your body to utilize 
muscle tissue. It's called a type one muscle type fiber. Type one is used for endurance. And our body has developed these two different fibers, type one muscle fibers and type two. There's actually type two A, A and type two B, but the fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Now the type one muscle fibers, great for endurance because you can use them over and over and over again and they use very little calories. So this is a very efficient way for us to achieve running or swimming or doing stuff that we may need and not burn up too much calories. It's calorie efficient. So doing cardio actually burns less calories because you're switching your muscle fibers over to type one muscle fibers. Whereas type two muscle fibers are used for more burst strength. You know, heavy weights, moving stuff takes a lot more energy and the muscle fibers are larger. So they actually consume more calories. When you work out with weights or resistance training, and when they say resistance training, I don't mean just weights. You can use bands, you can use machines, Pilates is resistance training. There's lots of ways. You just need something that resists the thing so that it is more strenuous. When you do that, you're using type two muscle fibers, which are very different. Now, those were meant and designed in our bodies to handle bigger strength. Type one fibers, not so strong. Type two fibers, much stronger, but burn a lot more calories. So when you work out with weights or do resistance training, you're actually recruiting more type two muscle fibers that burn more calories. But they, when you also do weight training, your body says, wait a minute, if you're taking on weights and you're doing this on a regular basis, you're consistent in your workouts three to five times a week at least, then your body starts saying, okay, well, let's preserve that muscle. Let's hang on to that muscle because you're going to need it. I see that you keep using this, this type of muscle tissue. So let's preserve it. So that's really important. And when you look at this, here you can see that last bar on the right, it, the, um, the resistance training preserves more of that muscle, preserves twice as much muscle, muscle as aerobic training. Aerobic training actually ends up burning muscle when you combine it with dieting. Well, this is the big problem that I see. So here's what you get. When you start out with X amount of body fat and X amount of muscle, right? Now, when you diet and exercise, you're going to decrease, you're going to burn up some of that fat, but you're also going to burn up some of that muscle. Now, when you gain that fat back, it goes up to here. Now, what have you done? You've increased the ratio of your fat here to your muscle here. Now, muscle burns 13 calories an hour. Fat burns three calories an hour. You can be the exact same weight burning less calories every single hour of every single day by dieting, dieting and exercise if it's aerobics. Now, if you continue to do the aerobics, yes, you can keep and maintain that. But what you're doing when you reduce that muscle is you're burning less calories all day long, all day, every day, because that, that muscle actually burns more calories. So when you weight train, and you drop that muscle and you rate train and you gain muscle, now you're burning more calories in every day. So here's the problem that people get into. All right, I start out with X amount of fat and I start out with X amount of muscle. I diet and I lose some muscle and I lose some fat, but then I gain the fat back. Now I'm the same weight, but I have less muscle. So if you eat the exact same amount of food, you will gain weight. This is the problem that people run up against. Hey, wait, I'm eating the same amount of calories. How come I'm gaining weight? It must be my age. No, it's what you did to your body that did it. You lose muscle. Now, people can lose muscle as they age from disuse. But I'm in my 60th year of life. Do I look like I'm losing muscle? No. It's because I train and I train with intensity and I eat resistance training. This can help you maintain strength, but maintain more muscle that will burn more calories all the time. That's how I can stay lean at under 10% body fat all the time because I am carrying more muscle. 
that is burning calories. Remember, two and a half pounds of muscle anywhere on your body. That means just a few ounces here and everywhere else on your body. If you put just two pounds of two and a half pounds of muscle, you're going to burn a pound of fat every single month more than if you did not have that. Now that's 12 pounds of, of fat that you're burning off that you won't gain in a one year period. You keep adding the years and you can see how people get obese <laughs> and overweight. This is the problem. You, you get into this ratio where you push down the amount of muscle from dieting. Then when you gain it back, you have a higher fat to muscle ratio. Eating the same calorie inputs because you're burning less, because you have less muscle, you are going to gain weight. So you can either eat a whole lot less, which is not usually what people prefer to do, especially when they've been into adulthood and are eating the same amount of meals and diet every day and they're used to it. Um, they don't think I should, that means it feels like you're dieting all the time and then people will rebel against that and, and it's not sustainable. That's why when you actually gain muscle, you could eat more and not gain body fat. Now, isn't that sound like a much better option for you to do it? I know. I love eating. I enjoy eating. I enjoy my food. And for me to be able to carry more muscle just because doing something I love, which is exercise, making sure it's intense exercise, you can actually get yourself to actually eating and enjoying food without worrying about calorie counting and macros and all that. I don't even count macros. I don't count calories at all. I don't have to. I look in the mirror, I go, oh, I look great. I'm low on body fat. <laughs> I'm shredded. Oh, cool. That's great. It's because I just focus on the training and eating healthy plant-based foods. The more healthy plant-based foods you eat, the better that's going to help. When you combine these two, whole food plant-based diet, especially plants, high in fiber and polyphenols, these both help your gut improve that. But remember, your gut microbiome actually changes and increases in biodiversity when you do strenuous exercise, resistance training. It changes your microbiome and your microbiome actually produces more of the bacteria that help you burn fat more. Just exercise changes your microbiome to help you utilize the energy that you're intaking more efficiently and more effectively. So exercise has a whole host of benefits, not just in weight loss, but let's, let's dig down into these results. I'm going to go ahead and bring the results up on the screen here in a second. Um, Okay, so here are the actual results. As you can see, diet alone, they lost about 4.8 kilos or about 10, 11% of their, their body, but they also lost muscle. Aerobic, they lost, lost more fat from 4.8 to 6.8. So this is aerobic exercise with a diet. Great, okay. But look at resistance training, 7.8. So you lost even more body fat, but more importantly, you preserve the muscle. Only eight tenths of a kilo of muscle was lost when resistance training was incorporated with a healthy diet. Whereas twice as much muscle was lost when you did diet and aerobic training. This is where the problem is. You're changing the muscle fiber, you're burning less energy, and your caloric load needs to go down even more, which then causes you to lose more muscle, which means you're not going to burn as many calories, which you have to reduce your calorie intake. And you see how that cycle is not a good cycle to be on? You know, you, 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 you're not burning the calories well because you don't have enough muscle, so you have to reduce your caloric intake. And then your body says, well, that caloric intake is low, so I'm going to start burning muscle because we're going to preserve the body fat. And it goes lower. And then you keep chasing it down to the point where you're really in a bad place. So this is not the appropriate way to do it. The appropriate way is to make sure you're doing a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet along with strenuous and resistance training. And again, it's not just lifting heavy weights. That's not at all. As a matter of fact, I, all the weights I lifted today were lightweights. I'm doing a, a style of training that's called volume training, which is five sets of 20 reps. 
So that's 100 reps per exercise. So I use a much lighter weight, about 25 to 30% of my total normal weight for lifting in an, in an 8 to 10 rep measure. I'm using that with higher reps. This burns a lot more calories, but you're still resistance training. So you're still maintaining that resistance training that triggers L-beta, AMP kinase. I know some of you don't know those terms, but these are the internal mechanisms that are going on that set a cascade of health benefits, increased glucose uptake into the muscle, increased insulin sensitivity, reducing your risk for diabetes, um, increase the uh, lowered uh, inflammation, all of these things are cascaded from this effect of, of changing to a more strenuous exercise. So the, here are the um, five different major keys to the method of actions at work when you use resistance training instead of aerobics um, training with a, a healthy diet. So the muscle fiber type is one. You're, you're utilizing type two muscles, which burn more calories than type one muscle fibers, which are used during endurance training, like cardio. Um, the calories used during your training go up. Because um, workouts, actually with weight or resistance, require more energy, right? They require more energy to make that contraction happen, whereas walking or running or, or just doing things is a little bit more easy uh, for the body to do. Plus, remember, different fiber type. So number three, so you're, you're burning more calories by using a different fiber type, type two. Number two, you're increasing the calories used during training. Number three, you're increasing the calories used after training. Now, this is really important because I saw somebody post a thing that's saying, oh, weight training burns 600 to 800 calories and, and you can easily eat that in a meal. And that's true. But that's not all the calories that are burned. Remember, the more you increase muscle, the more that is burning more calories for your body all day long, even when you're at rest, even when you're asleep, you're burning more calories if you have more muscle on your body. It's just plain physiology. And that's why the body says, if you are not using that muscle, we're going to break it down because it uses too much energy, because it's intensive in its use of energy. So the body says, well, it uses up too much energy and our body wants to conserve energy, make sure we have enough to survive, right? It's a survival instinct. So the body will actually break down and re remove muscle when it sees its calories are too low. And that's what's happening when you're dieting and using aerobic is your body says, oh, wait a minute, I don't have enough calories coming in. You're burning up a lot of calories through aerobics. I'm going to start tearing down some of this muscle because you're not using it. The type two muscle fibers, you're not using it and it's using calories all day long. So we're going to just take away that muscle because it's taking away calories that you need to preserve. So that's exactly what you don't want to happen. You want to be able to maintain that muscle mass so that you are burning more calories and can keep a very low body fat percentage in a healthy range that will keep you going <laughs> without um, having to regain or lose muscle and lose strength. Number one reason for um, hip fractures is loss of strength as we age. And if we can maintain that strength, we can reduce this. Number one cause of death in uh, nursing homes is slip and falls or hip fractures. Because of the hip fractures can cause infections and cause complications that end up causing the death. So maintaining your strength is vitally important, especially as you get age, but also for everything we do. <laughs> so the muscle lost, it means fewer calories too. So now you've got four different reasons why uh, using strength training, using resistance training can help you maintain a better weight and maintain that muscle that will burn those calories. And then finally, um, L-beta. So the mechanisms that the body starts in a cascade, let me go ahead and pull up what that looks like. Okay, so I did a, a, a recent uh, uh, Clean Machine Live on L-beta. L-beta is a uh, amino acid molecule that sets a cascade in motion of us turning white fat, which is stubborn fat, into brown fat. Brown fat 
is full of ATP, uh, mitochondria rather. And mitochondria can turn that fat into quick usable energy. So that's what you want. When you exercise, you are moving stubborn storage, white fat, and turning it into brown fat full of mitochondria that can utilize that fat quickly. So you're changing that your body into, into having more usable, quick energy fat away from fat that just gets stored subcutaneously, and even worse, what we call trunk fat. Now, trunk fat is the fat that's stored on our liver, on our heart, on our internal organs. Most people think of fat, they think of belly fat or body fat, subcutaneous fat, fat that's around our skin or on the outside of our body. That's actually not the major problem. The real problem lies with the fat that's inside our body, especially around our liver and heart. When these start to congest those things, we cause uh, heart attacks or liver dysfunction, what's called uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome, which can lead to a whole cascade of negative effects, including hypertension, uh, diabetes, just the list of diseases goes on from there. It's the beginning point for a whole bunch of disease states. So we wanna bring down that internal body fat and we do that by converting it from white fat, which is stubborn storage fat. That's fat where it's just hanging on to the triglycerides, the fat stores. When you move it to brown fat, brown fat can be burned for energy when you need it on demand quickly because it's full of mitochondria that can convert that triglyceride into usable energy. That's what you want. And the L-beta does that. Let's take a look at L-beta. I know this looks like a big scientific chart. I don't want to scare you. I just want to show you that this is a metabolic pathway that is in every human being. And when you put branched chain amino acids, specifically valine, it converts to beta, and you see the beta, the arrow going to the right, AMP kinase. AMP kinase is a amazing molecule. It is shown to increase longevity, increase, improve body composition, that's your ratio of fat to muscle, and just a whole bunch of very positive uh, health benefits, reducing fatty liver, reducing inflammation, um, utilizing better utilization of calories, increasing uh, insulin sensitivity, just a whole bunch of beautiful things, including fat, fatty, free fatty acid oxidation, or more commonly known as fat burning, right? <laughs> That's the stuff that we want. So this is what our body has this amazing system in place. Now I'm going to give you some, um, some cool tips on how to even maximize fat burning even more. So one, add muscle through resistance training. And again, that doesn't mean heavy weights. You can use lighter weights as long as there's resistance and as long as you're causing strenuous stress to your body, um, that will help. Here's one thing that I incorporate, 10 minutes of HIIT training, high intensity interval training. So what I do is either get on the uh, stair climber, which is more intense. It's a harder, more difficult thing. Or put the treadmill on uh, the highest incline at 15%. Now, those of you with joint or knee issues, be careful doing that. Uh, maybe just do a 5% incline or whatever. But an incline will put you at a more strenuous level. Or you can get on the elliptical and do bursts. 15 seconds, quick as you can, and then uh, 45 seconds of walking pace and then 15 seconds and do eight cycles of that, that's high intensity. What that does is recruit your, your body to say, all right, let's get into fat burning mode. It also helps burn off glycogen. Glycogen stores are stores of little, little sacks of sugar that are stored in your um, glucose that are stored in your muscle tissue for it to use very quickly. But it gets Glycogen can be burned up very quickly. So the first thing is your body takes all the glucose out of the bloodstream. Second thing, it uses up the glycogen. So this is a clever way to burn up all that energy, that glucose in the bloodstream, and then burn up the glycogen. Then the third step is the body gets into burning the fat. So then once you do this, this just 10 minutes, because you don't want to get do that too much because then you'll actually start tearing down muscle tissue, which you don't want. You can help preserve that muscle tissue by using branch chains while you work out. Remember, branch chains are the precursor to beta. 
and a beba is, is help you going to uh, burn that fat too as well. All right. So once you do that 10 minutes of hit, then you start training, you're already in fat utilization. So one of the things that I find when I do this is that I breathe really intensely and sweat. Okay. What is fat burning? Fat burning is called lipid or fat oxidation. And that's what our body does is take an oxygen molecule and combine it. So it tears apart that fat and releases that energy. So you can tell if you are in fat burning mode by how much you're breathing because your body says, okay, I'm breaking down a bunch of fat. I need more oxygen. I'm going to force you to breathe in more, right? So your breath is going to go up. Your sweat is going to go up because as you're burning that you're releasing heat and your body heat will go up, which will cause you to sweat. So when you find yourself breaking into a sweat and breathing really hard, that is the fat burning process. That's what it looks like from the outside. And that's what's going on on the inside is your body is taking all of that oxygen as you're breathing in really fast and really heavily and using that oxygen to break apart that, release the heat, which is causing sweat so your body can cool itself back down again. All right, so using 10 minutes of HIT right before you go in there will get your body burned up on the glucose in the bloodstream as well as the glycogen so that you can hit fat burning stage throughout your whole workout. Use full body workouts. Now, I use uh, individualized because I'm focusing on muscle gains. So I work on more intensifying that. Also, because I'm uh, in my 60th year of life, um, I need a little bit more rest and recovery in that. So, uh, and I want to train more often. So for my purposes, I uh, use that. But if you're looking to burn maximum amount of fat, use whole body training. Why is this? Because when you engage, the more muscle groups you engage in a single session, the more energy the body has to use to heal and repair and, and work all those muscle groups. So using whole body training is one of the best ways to accelerate fat loss if that's your goal. Using branch chain amino acids. Remember, this is branch chain amino acid valine is the precursor to beba, which is the precursor to PPAR alpha and AMP kinase, the whole cascade of what helps your body become more efficient at burning calories. Eat a whole food plants diet, especially foods rich in fiber and polyphenols. That's why I do a clean green protein shake, really rich in uh, antioxidants and polyphenols as well as fiber, 35% of your entire day's fiber in a single scoop. And I combine it with berries. Berries are great. They're low glycemic. They're high in fiber, high in prebiotics. And polyphenols themselves not only help your body burn fat, but polyphenols are prebiotics used by our gut bacteria to produce other chemicals that help you utilize calories more efficiently and effectively. So anything that is brightly colored, uh, orange and blues and greens and purples and reds and any of the fruits that are uh, high in colors or higher in polyphenols, especially berries because they're great low glycemic strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. The darker the color, the generally the higher the polyphenol content. And then reducing stress. Stress causes an, uh, an increase in cortisol, and cortisol can cause fat retention. Now, the good news is, and I'm going to go ahead and put this one up on the screen there too, is that the more you use a strenuous exercise, the greater the anxiety comes down. So I'm going to put this one up on there because this is important. I definitely use this. Look, I've run... A, I run a company and it's stressful. There's no two ways around it. You know, it's got a million moving parts and people and everything I have to work with, including you guys uh, and your orders. Thank you very much. Uh, but the stress can be real for everyone in today's life. But I'm going to go ahead and put this one up on the screen. And this is the effects of exercise on symptoms of anxiety and primate primary care patients. So this is randomized on RCT, a randomized controlled trial. And they showed there was significant intensity trend for improvement. That is, the more intensely the patients exercised, the more their anxiety symptoms improved. 
Exercise is one of the best ways to reduce stress. <laughs> Use it as a tool. Use it. If you're stressed and you feel like, oh, I don't want to work out. You know, work was a drag. i stressed. It was traffic was horrible. I'm all stressed out. Get in the gym. That's going to help reduce and recover that stress so that you have more energy. And remember, all that stress reduces produces cortisol. Cortisol speeds up the brain. And most people who have trouble sleeping at night, it's because they have too much cortisol in their bloodstream. It keeps your brain too active. That busy brain where you can't turn off your head when you're trying to sleep. Yeah, that's cortisol at play. When you exercise, that drops the cortisol like a rock because your body is actually relaxed now and you've initiated a whole cascade of events that are going to actually reduce that cortisol, bring up your hormone levels, the DHEA, testosterone, and stuff like this that actually help heal and repair. Remember, in stress, cortisol can tear down muscle. What you want to do is increase that DHA levels like with cell block 80 or in tens, both clinically proven to, to help you increase those good hormone levels and bring down that cortisol. Actually, um, it's the ingredient, the ashwagandha in cell block 80, amazing at helping reduce cortisol back into normal ranges so that you're not getting that cortisol storage of fat and cortisol tearing down muscle. Stress is a killer. Stress is a killer on our health, but it's also a killer on our on our fitness goals too as well. Drinking plenty of water, great. There's multiple studies out there. Just type it in on Google and you'll see drinking water. Here's one study. Drinking water is associated with weight loss and overweight dieting women independent of diet or exercise. Just drinking more water, especially drinking water right before meals or, or closer to the end of the day can actually increase your weight loss. So these are some great tips for you to use. And I'm, my goal is to really get you to incorporate more of these, especially how important resistance training is to maintaining a healthy body weight. And look, yes, you can feel better and look better, but that's not why I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this because it's important for our health. Do we wanna live a healthy and happy life? Do we want to be present and alive for those who we care about? Our kids, our, our family members, our friends, uh, our loved ones, uh, you know, our, our husband and wives. You know, these, these things are important. Let's, let's be present for them. I, look, I lost my father when he was 48 years of age. I lost my mom when she was 60, my brother when he was 58. God, I wish they were around. I wish they'd taken better care of themselves. I have so much joy I want to share with them. And they're not here to share it with me. That's why it's important to me. That's why I do what I do. I want to get you to have the healthiest life you can so you can live a rewarding life with the people you care about. And you can be a great example on them too as well. I hope you enjoyed this one. And please, please, this is not about fat shaming. I respect everybody where they're at. We all start somewhere. But it is so important to incorporate a healthy diet, resistance training exercise to help us get into a healthy lifestyle that can actually keep us out of disease states and keep us going so we can be there for those we love and enjoy the life that we're born into. I hope you enjoy your life and I hope these been a, these uh, tips and understanding of the science helps you out. And uh, please share if you think this is valuable information. Let's get this information out there so more people can represent a healthy lifestyle. We bring down our taxes, bring down healthcare costs when we all are a bit healthier. Thanks for joining me. Um, I look forward to having uh, some cool guests coming up uh, on the talk show um, over the next few weeks and months. So I hope you enjoy them too. I know I will. Thanks for joining me.